Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome to LMT YouTube channel. Tragic details about Prince Harry. People may not be able to call him His Royal Highness anymore, but Prince Harry still royally owns many hearts. Part of the reason he's so lovable is his joking nature and ability to relate to commoners in a genuine way. He has a charming smile, but there is real pain behind his eyes. Tragedies are part of royal history, from the death of King Edward VI, the reason why Queen Elizabeth has reigned since the age of 25, to the miscarriages her granddaughter Zara Tyndall has suffered, to Princess Diana's untimely death at just 36 years old. For various reasons, Harry has experienced his own fair share of misfortune in just 35 short years. Some of the heartbreak is completely out of his control, and some of his pain is of his own making. After all, even scandals from college days can cause life, long damage when you're a royal. So, let's take a look at the tragic life of Prince Harry. Princess Diana's tragic death changed Prince Harry's life forever. On August 31, 1997 injuries from a car crash killed Prince Harry's mother, Princess Diana. Many factors are presumed to be involved in the crash, including the speed of driver Henry Paul. The paparazzi was also involved in the crash, as photographers were chasing a car holding Diana, her boyfriend Dodie Fade, Paul, and a bodyguard. Three photographers were symbolically charged one euro for their part, but no symbolic charges can replace a mother. Harry said in the 2017 BBC documentary Diana, I think one of the hardest things to come to terms with is the fact that the people that chased her into the tunnel were the same people that were taking photographs of her while she was still dying on the backseat of the car. That year, he spoke to Newsweek about enduring his mother's funeral. Harry said, My mother had just died, and I had to walk a long way behind her coffin, surrounded by thousands of people watching me, while millions more did on television. I don't think any child should be asked to do that, under any circumstances. He only started speaking out about the effects that losing his mother as a young royal has had on his life as an adult. But all you have to do is look at a picture of Harry on that day to imagine his trauma. Prince Harry took his parents' contentious divorce extremely hard. Roughly a year before Princess Diana's death, she and Prince Charles finalized their divorce. Newsweek reported. They were on civil terms by that time, Express reported. But the initial separation and majority of Charles and Diana's 15-year union was full of drama, including affairs on both sides, public wars in the press, Diana's struggle with bulimia, and Charles insisting that Queen Elizabeth strip Diana of the royal part of her title. At age 11, Prince Harry wasn't as aware of the heartbreak within his parents' marriage as Prince William, and his reaction reportedly showed that. Vanity Fair's royal correspondent, Elizabeth Holmes, said in the documentary William and Harry, Brothers in Arms. Harry took it very badly. Of course, being younger than William, he was incredibly upset. In the 2017 ITV documentary Diana, Our Mother, her life and legacy Harry revealed one of the worst parts of being a child of divorce. He said, adding, there was the point where our parents split and we never saw our mother enough or we never saw our father enough. There was all that to contend with. I don't pretend we're the only people to have to deal with that, but it was an interesting way of growing up. He remembers the journey between houses vividly. There was a lot of traveling and a lot of fights on the back seat with my brother, which I would win. Why were Prince Harry and Prince William feuding? News of a rift between Prince Harry and Prince William broke around the 2018 holidays. An unnamed friend of the brothers told Vanity Fair, Harry felt William wasn't rolling out the red carpet for Meghan Markle and told him so. They had a bit of a fallout 
which was only resolved when Prince Charles stepped in and asked William to make an effort. Oz have since been on both couples, like the tabloid frenzy over William seemingly ignoring Meghan as she tried to talk to him during a walk. Thereafter, Harry and William only seemed to be together on holidays. During family Easter in April 2019, people reported that they kept their distance from one another. Relations warmed in May 2019, when Harry and Meghan's son Archie was born, but royal correspondent Melanie Bromley told E.T. that the brothers weren't speaking before his birth. Tensions seemed high again in October 2019, when Harry admitted in the ITV documentary Harry and Meghan, an African journey, that his relationship with William wasn't perfect. He said, adding, His family being under the pressure that it's under, inevitably stuff happens. We are on different paths at the moment, but I will always be there for him as I know, he'll always be there for me, according to US Weekly. Since the admission, and the Sussexes stepping down from royal duties, it's been a roller coaster ride, but Harry reportedly began leaning on William again after his relocation to the U.S. A controversial costume landed Prince Harry in hot water. Prince Harry might be married to one of the first black members of the royal family, but in 2005, the 21-year-old royal faced backlash when BBC News published pictures of him in a white supremacist costume at a private party. The costume clearly featured a swastika, a symbol of hatred commonly associated with Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party. Harry released an official apology through the Clarence House press office. The statement said, I am very sorry if I caused any offense or embarrassment to anyone. It was a poor choice of costume, and I apologize. Perhaps because of his age, representatives of the Jewish faith in England were quick to forgive the young prince. Rabbi Jonathan Romain, a spokesman for the Reform Synagogues of Great Britain, told CNN, The fact that the palace has issued an apology indicates that this was a mistake by the prince, but having been sick given, the apology should now be accepted. Other representatives of the faith around the world were not so forgiving. Rabbi Marvin Heyer of the Simon Wiesenthal Center in Los Angeles told CNN, and it is inexcusable for a member of the royal family to do that. Heyer continued, I think he should join the British delegation that is going to the 60th anniversary of the liberation of the concentration camp Auschwitz. That would transmit to the world that he gets it. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle waged war on the tabloids. Since Prince Harry's relationship with actress Meghan Markle became public, his relationship with the press has become more contentious. Harry released a statement in October 2019 announcing the couples to sue several tabloid publications. The statement read, For these select media, this is a game, and one that we have been unwilling to play from the start. I have been a silent witness to her private suffering for too long. To stand back and do nothing would be contrary to everything we believe in. As of this writing, Harry is reportedly suing the owners of The Sun and The Daily Mirror for illegal interception of voicemail messages, as confirmed by Buckingham Palace. Meghan is separately suing Daily Mail for alleged breach of privacy and copyright infringement over its decision to publish a private letter she had sent to her estranged father. Harry's dislike for the press goes so deep that he has reportedly been trying to change the royal family's relationship with the press since before his relationship with Meghan became such an obsession. The couple's plan goes beyond court battles. According to Vanity Fair, they are on a mission to redefine how the press operates. That includes putting press embargoes on personal news, like when their son Archie met Archbishop Desmond Tutu, and then sharing the news on their Instagram account. This has only added more tension to Prince Harry, and Meghan's relationship with the media. Prince Harry fears Meghan Markle will suffer a tragic fate 
like Princess Diana. Prince Harry's problems with the press are deeper than any legal battle. He is scared to lose his wife or child in an accident like the one that killed his mother Princess Diana, and he said so explicitly in the statement denouncing the legal battle. The statement on the Sussex official website reads, My deepest fear is history repeating itself. I've seen what happens when someone I love is commoditized to the point that they are no longer treated or seen as a real person. I lost my mother and now I watch my wife falling victim to the same powerful forces. He puts it all even more simply when he says, there comes a point when the only thing to do is to stand up to this behavior because it destroys people and destroys lives. The toll that the media attention was taking on the couple is evident in the Tom Bradby film Harry and Meghan, an African journey. The director called it the couple's biggest struggle, rightly or wrongly. Speaking with Bradby, Meghan admitted, it's hard, adding that her British friends told her, the British tabloids will destroy your life, said Harry told Bradby. I will not be bullied into playing a game that killed my mom. Less than a year after the film aired, Harry and Meghan stepped down from royal duties and moved to America. Perhaps Meghan's friends were correct. Lasting love was elusive for Prince Harry for a long time. Prince Harry has fought some very hard battles with Meghan Markle by his side, but there was a point in his life when he thought he might never find a partner. In a 2013 televised interview recorded from his post in Afghanistan, he said about finding love, you ain't ever going to find someone who's going to jump into the position that it would hold. Simple as that. In 2017, actor Cressy de Bonis, who was one of Prince Harry's most serious girlfriends, opened up to BBC Four's Woman's Hour about what it felt like to be defined by the man she was dating. Bonus said, adding, I think it's that thing of being pigeonholed, especially in England. I find that people are very quick to put you in a box or put you in a corner. It's incredibly frustrating. And thankfully, Harry's younger self was wrong. But Harry and Meghan fleeing the country, and the royal family certainly supports Bonus claims. Prince Harry had to give up titles that matter to him deeply. When Prince Harry stepped down from his royal duties in March 2020, he also had to give up three military titles, Captain General of the Royal Marines, Honorary Air Force Commandant of the Royal Air Force Base Huntington, and Honorary Commodore, in Chief of the Royal Naval, Command Small Ships and Diving. ITV reported, He's not permitted to hold these titles as they constitute official duties. Harry has taken great pride in serving his country, his titles, and the work he's done for veterans, particularly founding the Indictus Games, which he will still run. The Sun reported on the apparent sadness that Harry emanated at his last military event. He reportedly told Major General Matthew Holmes, head of the Royal Marines, I am so proud to have served as the Royal Marines captain, and am devastated that I am having to step down. I feel I'm letting people down, but I had no choice. A source reportedly told The Sun, serving in the military creates a bond which you suspect Meghan may struggle to understand. ITV reported, The role of Captain General of the Royal Marines might have been particularly hard for Harry to let go of because he took the position over from his grandfather, Duke of Edinburgh, who held the title for 64 years. Did makes it permanently damage Prince Harry's relationship with Queen Elizabeth. Prince Harry's grandmother, Queen Elizabeth, has always had a special place in her heart for him. When Harry and Meghan Markle announced on Instagram that they wanted to carve out a progressive new role for themselves within the royal family, and stepped down as senior members, they reportedly did so without consulting Queen Elizabeth and other family members. According to Vanity Fair, the Queen and other senior members of the royal family were reportedly furious, which reported that she was particularly hurt 
because she had done all she could to appease Harry and his wife since their wedding in 2018. He has dropped a bombshell and left the Queen to pick up the pieces. It has not been great for their relationship, an unnamed confidant of the Queen told the outlet, adding, what was once a very warm and jokey grandmother, grandson rapport has dissipated. Although Queen Elizabeth eventually issued a rare and official statement about the personal matter, in which she expressed support for Harry and Meghan's decision, it's tough to imagine there isn't some lingering pain there. As important as it is for Harry to protect his family and keep them happy, there is something heartbreaking about the erosion of the relationship between the stoic queen and the jovial prince. Check out one of our newest videos right here, plus even more LMT videos about your favorite stuff. For coming soon subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one. Don't stop.